Hello, welcome to How a House Works and How to Keep It Working. The following DVD was developed to help you better understand how your house operates and to provide information to you to maintain your home and investment. This information is useful for both single family houses and multi unit houses that Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity builds. We have divided this DVD into 17 smaller sections that you can go to directly for more specific information. The sections are Natural Gas Service Water Service Furnace and Thermostat Ventilation Water Distribution Electrical Distribution Kitchen Bathroom Safety Systems and Products Laundry Additional Interior Maintenance Exterior Maintenance Building Process and Warranty Basic Tools Maintenance Escrow and Hiring Subcontractors Energy Usage in Your Home Living in an Association Section 1 Natural Gas Service Natural gas is provided to your house by a gas utility provider. It is distributed through pipes underground and is connected to the gas meter at the house. Your gas meter measures how much natural gas is used to fuel different appliances or equipment in your home. Xcel Energy and Centerpoint Energy are the two primary providers in the Twin Cities. It is important to keep the relief vent clear to ensure its safe operation. The gas company will read your gas meter either at your house or automatically through a phone line. If a meter reader requests access to the inside of your home, check identification and call the gas company to verify identity before letting them into your home. From the meter, gas flows to a regulator and then to different appliances in the home. The furnace, water heater, and stove operate with natural gas. The flow of the gas can be stopped at the individual shutoff valves or at the main shutoff. This valve controls gas to your furnace. If the valve handle is in line or parallel with the gas line, it is open. If the handle is perpendicular to the line, it is closed, which means that the natural gas appliances will not work. The utility company that serves your city will send a gas bill to you every month. Most of the natural gas you use in your house is used by your furnace. Typically, your gas bill will usually be low in the summer and higher in the winter when you use your furnace. Keeping the temperature in your home between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit will help keep your gas bill low. However, if your gas bill is high in the summer, it may be due to excessive hot water or dryer usage. It is also a good idea to contact your utility company to sign up for a budget plan. A budget plan begins with an average of the fuel used at your home over a one-year period. The average is broken down into monthly payments. On a budget plan, your gas bill will be the same amount every month. Section 2. Water Service Water is supplied to the home from a pipeline in the street. The water meter measures the water your family uses. Depending on the city you live in, water bills are sent either monthly or every three months. The water meter is read electronically. There are two shutoff valves, one on each side of the water meter. Either of these valves may be used to shut off water to the house in an emergency. When all of the plumbing fixtures are not in use, Observe the small triangle in the meter to see if it's moving. A slow movement will indicate a slow water leak with a plumbing fixture. Section 3. Furnace and Thermostat This is the furnace. It provides warm air to the house. The furnace temperature is set at the thermostat, which will be discussed shortly. Some houses have central air conditioning installed. If the house has central air conditioning, the blower motor in the furnace will circulate cooled air. This switch controls the blower on the furnace. If it gets turned off, the blower will not operate. If you have no heat, first check that this switch is in the on position. If not, turn it to the on position. The furnace should start immediately. 
This is the same for central air conditioning. The furnace filter removes dust and dirt from the air if it is cleaned or replaced regularly. Check the filter monthly and replace it every three months. Pleated filters work the best. The size of the required filter is printed on the tops of the filter. Be sure to have the size with you when purchasing new filters. To check or replace the filter, remove the metal cover and pull out the old filter. Match the arrow's direction on the new filter with the same direction as the arrow drawn on the furnace. The arrow always points from the return duct towards the furnace. Replace the cover so that it fits snugly. A service reminder sticker is included on the filter bag. Write the next date to change the filter on the sticker and place it on the ductwork as a reminder. Every two to three years, have the furnace serviced to keep it in the best operating condition. Contact the heating contractor who installed the furnace or other qualified contractors that perform this service. Service plans may also be offered by the local utility company to cover this maintenance. There is a condensate line that runs from the furnace to the floor drain that allows water created from the combustion process to drain from the furnace. Water coming out of this pipe is normal. We'll now look at the thermostat and how it works. There are two sets of controls, heat cool off and fan auto on. The thermostat is a switch located on the main living level of your home and is about five feet above the floor. Keep in mind that the thermostat is sensing the temperature at this level. It may be warmer at the ceiling and cooler on the floor because warm air rises and cool air falls. Likewise, an upper floor of your house may be warmer than the lower level due to heat rising. There are two sets of numbers on the thermostat. One number tells what the temperature you want the house to be, and the other number tells you what the current temperature is in the house. There is a setting for heat, cool, and off on the thermostat. In the fall, turn the switch to the heat position. This will start the furnace automatically to provide heat. If the room air is warmer than your setting, the furnace will not turn on. We recommend that you keep your thermostat set no higher than 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This will increase the efficiency of your furnace, help lower your gas bill, and will result in a longer life of a very expensive item. To prevent major damage to your house from freezing of water pipes, never turn your thermostat off in the winter. If you have central air, switch the thermostat to the cool position in the summer. The air conditioning will turn on automatically when the thermostat senses a change in air temperature. Allow time for the furnace to adjust to your desired temperature. Turning the thermostat way up in the winter or way down in the summer will not change the temperature any faster. It'll only make the furnace work harder. The thermostat is only a switch. Higher settings will just waste energy. There is also a setting for the fan that circulates the heated or cooled air. The fan on auto feature allows you to have the fan automatically run during the heating or cooling operation or it can be turned to the on position to keep the air circulating even when the heating or cooling functions are not required. If you are experiencing problems with your furnace, contact your heating contractor, whose contact information is on a label on your furnace. Section 4. Ventilation. Ventilation is the controlled addition and distribution of fresh air to the home. Ventilation systems use exhaust fans to remove stale, moist air and bring fresh air into your home. To remove excess humidity, your house is equipped with different exhaust fans, an inline fan connected to the first floor bathroom, and a kitchen range hood. If you live in a two-story home, there is another exhaust fan in a second bathroom. Using the different ventilation systems in your house will help keep your house and family healthy. If your house is too humid, mold and mildew may grow in your home and may cause your family members to get sick. 
In the colder months, it is especially important to manage the humidity level to reduce the chance of mold growth. Daily activities such as cooking, showering, bathing, laundry, and even talking add humidity to the home. The use of exhaust fans will help with proper ventilation. This dial controls the speed of the fan. The speed dial should be set to low in the winter months. Dial it higher if you see signs of moisture in your house, such as condensation on windows. The speed control fan can be turned off in the spring or when it's comfortable to open windows for natural ventilation. Turning the timer switch in the bathroom will put the fan in high speed during the time set. Use the timer switch when showering. Always let the fan run at least 30 minutes after showering to remove excess moisture from the air. In houses that have a second bathroom upstairs, there will also be a timer switch for that bathroom fan. This fan is a separate exhaust fan from the first floor bathroom. This is the range hood. Its fan will remove humid and greasy air from your kitchen and direct it outside. There is a high and low speed setting for the fan. Always use the range hood fan when cooking. Use the high speed setting when boiling water or frying food. Let it run for 5 to 10 minutes after you have finished cooking to remove excess humidity. Also use lids on your pots to help reduce humidity. Air from your furnace is circulated through the house by metal ductwork. The ductwork is visible in the mechanical area and is between the walls of each room of the house. This is the heat vent, usually located in the floor. Heated air from your furnace comes through the ductwork to vents to heat each room. Keep furniture and window coverings away from these vents so that the warm air can spread through your home in the winter. The air may not always feel warm to your hand. This does not mean the furnace isn't working. If the upper level of your home is too warm, close the floor registers in the upstairs. This will allow more warm air on the main level and help balance out the temperature. These vents located in the wall return air back down to the furnace to be filtered and heated. Keep furniture from blocking these vents as well. As the exhaust fans pull humid air out of the house, fresh air is brought into the house through the insulated pipe. This pipe brings fresh air into your basement. It replaces the humid air that is pulled outside by the exhaust fans. At the opening, you may feel cold air in the winter. Do not cover it or place objects in front of it. It is important for your family's safety that fresh air is brought into the house to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. Section 5. Water Distribution We will now look at hot and cold water distribution. After water goes through the water meter, the pipes distribute water where it is used inside and outside the house. One of the water pipes goes to the water heater where the water is heated and sent to the plumbing fixtures that use hot water, such as the kitchen sink and bathrooms. This is a tank style water heater. It is designed to supply hot water to your faucets and showers. There are two stop valves for the gas and cold water supply. The valve is open if it is in line or parallel to the supply line. If the valve handle is perpendicular to the supply line, the valve is closed. Make sure the water heater is plugged in and the fan switch is turned on or the unit will not operate. The water heater thermostat controls the temperature of the water. The temperature of the water should be no more than 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Water hotter than 120 degrees can burn skin. The water heater will keep the water at the set temperature. Turning up your water temperature will not increase your supply of hot water. To change the temperature of the water in the water heater, you must push down on both arrows at the same time. Press the up or down arrow to adjust the temperature. This orange arrow is the recommended setting. If you plan to be away from your home for several days, set the arrow to the vacation setting to save energy. 
Cold water will go to one or two outside faucets for watering plants and grass. The water supply for these faucets needs to be drained out in the fall when the risk of pipes freezing increases. First, close the valve. Then remove the small drain cap on the side of the valve. Place a small bucket or container underneath the small drain opening. Go to the outside faucet and open the faucet by turning the handle counterclockwise. Air will enter the spout and let the water in the pipe drain out. After the water is drained out, close the outside faucet and replace the drain cap on the inside. When springtime comes, open the valve to let water to the outside faucet. If you are having problems with your water heater or plumbing, contact the plumber who completed the plumbing work inside of your house. Their contact information is located on a label on your furnace. Section 6. Electrical Distribution This is the electrical panel. It distributes electrical current to the individual circuit breakers which control the flow of electricity in your house. The circuit breakers are numbered with even numbers on the right side and odd numbers on the left. A label on the panel door will list the areas of the house that the circuit controls. If the electrical appliances are using too much electricity in a room, a circuit breaker will trip and you will lose power in that part of your home. If a breaker trips, you will see the switch in the middle position. Check the panel's door to find what rooms of the house the circuit controls. Restore power to the outlet or outlets by resetting the circuit breaker. To reset the circuit breaker, you must first unplug some of the electrical devices, such as lamps, radio, or TV, on that circuit. Then, go back to the panel, locate the breaker that is tripped, push it to the off position first, and then push it to the on position. If the breaker trips again, contact your electrician. Broken or worn out circuit breakers should only be replaced by an electrician. The electrical contractor who worked on your house will be listed on a label on the furnace. This is a special outlet called a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI outlet. These are located in damp locations such as bathrooms, kitchens, basements, attached garages and outdoor locations. The purpose of the GFCI is to protect you from electrical shock. A surge of electricity to any of these outlets would be detected by the GFCI. The GFCI outlet would then shut itself off and stop the flow of electricity to the other outlets. The GFCI outlet has two buttons, a test button and a reset button. If the GFCI outlet is tripped, the power turns off. Press the reset button to restore power to the outlet. To test a GFCI outlet, push the test button. The reset button will pop out and the power will be off to the outlet. To restore power, press in the reset button. Test GFCI outlets once a year. An outlet located in the living room and in some bedrooms may have a red dot indicating that the outlet is controlled by a wall switch for use with a lamp. Section 7. Kitchen. In this section, we'll be looking at the sink and two major appliances, the range and the refrigerator. Both of these appliances have been generously donated to all U.S. Habitat affiliates by Whirlpool Corporation. The gas range has two major components, the cooktop and the oven. The range's cooktop and oven are fueled by natural gas and use an electronic ignition to light the gas. To start a cooktop burner, push and turn the knob to ignite. You will hear a clicking sound for a couple of seconds before the flame is ignited. After the burner is lit, turn the knob to the desired setting and the sound will stop. You may notice the smell of natural gas for a few seconds but it will disappear after the flame is lit. Keeping your cooktop clean will keep your stove working well. When using the cooktop, always turn on the range hood exhaust fan. 
This will remove greasy air and steam from cooking. Clean the screen monthly in hot soapy water. If parts are needed for the range hood exhaust fan, refer to the model number on the side of the hood. For more range hood information, refer to section 4, ventilation. The oven is started by dialing the oven knob to a desired temperature. An electric plug located in the back of the oven will heat up and ignite the gas to heat the oven. If the oven does not ignite within 30 to 45 seconds, but the stovetop burners do light, turn off the oven immediately and call Whirlpool for service help. You can cook food in the bottom rack by turning the oven dial to broil. The broiling pan can be adjusted to two settings from the flame. The broiler should not be used as a storage space. The model and serial numbers for your range are on the side of the broiler drawer opening. Refer to this number for repair or parts. If you are ever experiencing an issue with your range that you believe to be under warranty, call Whirlpool Customer Support at the number on the screen. The refrigerator never needs defrosting. Interior and exterior cleaning instructions are in the manufacturer's guide and should be read by the homeowner. To get behind the refrigerator, gently pull forward while grasping both sides of it. Remove the front grill and vacuum the coils once a year. When your oven and refrigerator were installed, the owner's manuals were placed in a drawer in your kitchen. Be sure to save these owner manuals in a safe place so that you can refer to them if you are experiencing a problem. The kitchen faucet usually has a single handle that controls the flow and temperature of the water. If you are losing water pressure at your faucet, you may need to clean the aerator screen. Unscrew the cap on the end of the faucet spout, remove and rinse out the screen, and replace it. If you need to turn the water off to the faucet for repairs or replacement, pull out the stop valve handle below the sink. Turn the faucet on to check that the water is off. After repairs are complete, push the handle back in to restore water to the faucet. Some homes have a wheel style shutoff valve. If you have this style, turn the handle clockwise to the right until it stops and the water stops flowing. Turn all the way to the left counterclockwise to turn the water back on again. Never put grease down your drain. Grease will clog your pipes and may require a plumber to fix the problem. Section 8. Bathroom. The toilet has several parts that wear out over time and will need to be replaced. To make repairs on your toilet, First, turn the water off in the same way as shown at the kitchen sink. Pull the valve handle towards you to stop the water and push it back in to allow the flow of water. The flapper at the bottom of the tank over time will not seal as well as when the toilet was new and will allow water to slowly leak into the bowl. Hearing the toilet tank filling for a brief moment and then stopping is a sign of a leak. This may happen every minute or so. Replace the flapper when you notice this sign. If this leak is not repaired, your water bill will go up. To replace the flapper, drain the tank by turning off the water and flushing the toilet several times to lower the water level. Remove the flapper from the overflow tube as well as the chain connecting it to the flush handle. Take it to the hardware store for proper matching. Replace flapper, reconnect the chain, turn on water, and let the tank fill. Check operation and listen for leaks around the new flapper. Another sign of a part being worn out or out of adjustment is the sound of a toilet always filling and not shutting off. This could either be the tank fill valve being worn out or the float being out of adjustment. If water is spilling over the overflow tube, then the float switch needs to be adjusted downward. If the water still runs after this has been done, a rubber diaphragm in the fill valve will need to be replaced. Access this part by removing the four screws on the top of the valve. Lift off the top cap of the valve and remove the rubber diaphragm. 
take this to a hardware store to match a proper replacement. Install the new diaphragm and reassemble the top of the valve. Turn the water back on to check the toilet's operation. To reduce the risk of the toilet backing up and overflowing, only flush toilet paper down the toilet. Other items will clog the sewer drain and cost a lot of money for a plumber to repair. If the toilet becomes clogged, do not keep flushing. You can attempt to open the block pipe by the use of a plunger. Always use a shower curtain to keep water inside the tub area. Keep the drain clean and free of debris by using a drain cover to prevent hair from clogging the drain. Please refer to Section 9 on Safety to learn about safe cleaning supplies. Periodic cleaning will keep the services looking clean and healthy for a long time. The bathroom faucet is similar to the kitchen faucet. Please refer to Section 7 for faucet maintenance. Lastly, the use of bathroom fans are very important for humidity control. Refer to Chapter 4 on ventilation for more information. Section 9 Safety Systems and Products In this section, we will look at various safety systems in your house and discuss the use of safety products and safe cleaning supplies. All new homes have several safety devices that are required by the building codes. There is a passive radon pipe, smoke detector, and in newer homes, a carbon monoxide detector as well. All new Twin Cities Habitat homes built since 1996 with a partial or full basement have a radon exhaust pipe that runs from below the basement floor up through the roof. This pipe is not meant to be used for plumbing or removed if there is any remodeling done in your house. This pipe removes a natural occurring soil gas called radon which is known to cause lung cancer. The smoke detector will sound an alarm if it detects smoke in your house. They are located on each level of the house and in each sleeping room. All of the smoke detectors are linked together electrically. If one smoke detector is activated, all of the smoke detectors will sound an alarm. Test your smoke detectors every three months by holding down a test button for three seconds until you hear the alarm sound. The alarms in all the other rooms should sound as well. The smoke alarms also have a battery backup for power. This feature will allow the smoke alarm to function if there is a power outage. Changing the battery once a year in the smoke detectors is strongly recommended. To do this, open the battery cover and pull out the battery. Replace the battery and slide the cover back in. A chirping sound from the detector means the battery needs to be replaced. If the smoke alarm continues to chirp after replacing the battery, call the electrician that worked on your house. Do not permanently disconnect your smoke detector. You will jeopardize your family's safety. When the smoke detector sounds an alarm, leave your house and call 911. There is a fire extinguisher in your kitchen. To use it, Pull out the pin, aim it at the bottom of the flame, and pull the trigger. You may purchase additional household fire extinguishers for the garage and laundry areas of your home. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas produced from natural gas burning appliances. High levels of carbon monoxide exposure can be life-threatening. New building codes require carbon monoxide detectors on each level of the house and one should be located within 10 feet of bedrooms. It sounds an alarm if there is a dangerous level of carbon monoxide in your house. Typically, carbon monoxide detectors are a plug-in type. If you hear the alarm, open several windows and immediately leave the house and call 911 from a neighbor's house. The carbon monoxide detectors should be tested periodically by pushing down the test button. There will be a series of loud beeps to show it is working. Some styles of carbon monoxide detectors have a battery backup so that if the power goes off, the detector will still work. Do not unplug or disconnect your carbon monoxide detector. Natural gas has a pungent odor added to it to help detect leaks. 
you may smell it briefly when you ignite a burner on your cooktop. If you smell natural gas in your home, leave the house immediately. Call 911 from a neighbor's house and let the fire department check out your house before you return. Additional exterior safety items you may purchase include motion detector lights or a security fence. A short piece of wood allows the basement egress window to be slightly open for fresh air, but limits the window's opening distance for security. For additional safety information, contact the local police department or a neighborhood block club or community organization. If you have small children, there are other items you can purchase to make your house safer. For example, special oven knobs that can keep your child from being able to turn on the stove by themselves. These can also be placed on doorknobs to keep children out of certain rooms. A gate that protects your child from unsafe areas such as stairs and out of the kitchen if needed. Blind cord blocks which keep your child from getting tangled with them. Cabinet locks that keep your child from getting into anything dangerous that might be in a drawer. Electrical outlet covers which will keep your child's fingers out of outlets. The most useful safety device, however, may be a cell phone. Cell phones allow you to move freely with your kids around your house and yard. Another way to keep your house safe is to use cleaning supplies that will not harm your house or your family. The following two formulas for homemade all-purpose cleaners are safe, effective, and cheap. Keep all homemade cleaners labeled and out of reach of children. Baking soda cleans and deodorizes all kitchen and bathroom surfaces. To make a general cleaner with baking soda, dissolve four tablespoons of baking soda into one quart of warm water. Distilled white vinegar and salt can also be mixed together in a spray bottle or bucket for a good surface cleaner. These products both use ingredients that are safe to mix together. Please read the instructions on other cleaning supplies. Many are unsafe to mix. Natural cleaning recipes such as these use ingredients you may already have in your home and do not contain toxic ingredients such as bleach or ammonia. If you purchase cleaning supplies from a store, look for biodegradable or non-corrosive products. More natural cleaning recipes can be found on the internet. Your house was designed with safety systems you need. Buying products that will help protect your children from unsafe items in your home and using safe cleaning supplies are good for both your family and the environment. Section 10. Laundry. Every home built by Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity comes with plumbing hookups for a clothes washer and dryer. This includes water supplies for hot and cold water and the dryer vent to the outside. If you choose to purchase a washer and dryer, we recommend that you look for a high efficiency washing machine and natural gas dryer. Follow manufacturer's installation manual for installing appliances. A front-loading washing machine will use less water than a top-loading machine, and a gas dryer uses less energy than an electric dryer. While both of these appliances cost more upfront, you will save money over the long run. Look for the Energy Star label. All gas dryers must be directly vented to the outside. Contact a heating or plumbing contractor to make the gas connection to the dryer. To reduce the risk of fire and keep your dryer running efficiently, be sure to clean the lint trap between every load and annually inspect the exhaust vent for lint buildup. Section 11, Additional Interior Maintenance. Being a good homeowner takes time. Taking good care of your home will help the different features of your house to last longer and may also prevent major issues that can cost a lot of money to fix. Health issues, such as asthma and allergies, can also develop if basic maintenance and cleaning tasks are not done regularly. To help remind you of seasonal work to be done in and around your house, Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity has prepared a regular maintenance checklist. Please use this as a reminder. In this section, we will cover several different items and provide instructions on maintenance. 
Houses with basements will have a sump basket built into the concrete floor. Drain tubes that are on the outside of the house connect to the sump basket and empty any rainwater that reaches the bottom of the foundation wall into the sump basket. The lid of the sump basket and the plugs inserted in the lid must stay tightly sealed to prevent soil gases from entering the house. After heavy rainfall or after the snow melts, check the sump basket for water. To do this, remove the large pipe cap in the basket's lid and use a long stick to check the water level. If the water level is high, pry off the lid, remove as much water as possible with a smaller bucket, then reattach the lid. If the water level rises frequently, a submersible pump can be installed that will empty the water automatically. Sump pumps are installed by Habitat as needed. If your house's sump basket has pipes coming out of the lid, then you have a sump pump installed. The pump should always be plugged into its designated outlet. If your sump basket is not kept in working condition, your basement could flood. Check the water level in the basket regardless of the presence of a sump pump. Tub and tile caulk is useful for maintaining the seal around the sinks and shower. Over time, the seal may crack or pull away from some of the surfaces to which it's attached. Remove old caulk and install new caulk to prevent water seepage, especially around sinks and shower stall. Smooth bead of caulk with a damp rag for a finished look. A plunger is an important tool to have to unclog a toilet or bathroom drain. Placing the plunger so that it makes a seal over the drain or in the toilet bowl and then pushing down on it will force any stuck material through the drain. Laminate flooring is a durable, easy to clean surface. Clean it often with a damp mop. A simple solution of one quarter cup white distilled vinegar in one gallon warm water will clean up most dirt and food spills. Water spills must be dried up quickly. Keeping your laminate flooring clean and dry will keep it looking new for a long time. Anderson Windows is a generous provider of highly efficient windows to Habitat affiliates and has been a partner with Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity since 1997. The Anderson windows in your home can easily be removed for cleaning. Unlock the window sash lock and raise the window to about the middle of the window. Slide the latches towards the middle of the window and gently pull the top of the window towards you. You can then clean the window and replace it the same way so that the latches lock the window back into place. Torn or ripped screens on your windows can be inexpensively repaired and replaced at most hardware stores. Screen frames that are bent will need to be replaced. Torn or removed screens make a house look like it's not being maintained and can be an eyesore to the neighborhood. All screens can be removed from the inside of the house. Remove screen for repair by sliding screen holder towards the middle. Lift screen up with screen tab and lift screen away from window. Grab screen side with other hand and tilt screen to bring into the inside of the house. Replace repaired screen in reverse order. During the first year of a newly built house, the framing materials will dry and materials attached to the framing may develop cracks called shrinkage cracks and nail pops. The building as a whole will settle slightly too. Settling will show up as cracks in the basement floor and at wall and ceiling intersections. These cracks are very common in all new construction. They can be repaired with wall filler material, such as spackle. This material can be purchased at all home improvement centers and hardware stores. Remove any loose material and use a spackle knife to apply the filler material over the crack or nail pop. Let dry and lightly sand smooth. A one gallon can of touch-up paint was left in your home and can be used to paint over the area of repair. Stir the paint well before applying, as some of the paint mix will have settled. Concrete cracks in the inside or outside the home can be filled with a filler material that comes in a caulking tube and is specifically made for filling concrete and masonry material. 
cut the tip of the caulk tube and follow manufacturer's directions for applying and cleanup. Section 12, Exterior Maintenance. There is a separate list of items to maintain on the exterior of your home. It is important to take good care of the outside of your home to avoid costly repairs. Refer to the regular maintenance checklist for additional items to inspect. The siding and roofing of your home provides the initial protection from weather. Inspect the siding and roofing after a severe storm, especially if there was hail or you notice branches down in your yard or neighborhood. In the springtime, check the area where the siding starts from the foundation wall. Bees and insects may try to make their home where there is an opening. Caulk any openings to keep insects and driving rain out. Check for loose or missing shingles on the roof, too. Repair or replace these as soon as possible to avoid any water damage into your home. Storm doors add additional protection to outside weather in the cooler months and allow additional ventilation in the warmer months. Strong winds can catch a door and suddenly open it and damage the storm door closer. Severe or extreme use can also cause excessive wear to the storm door. Storm doors will last longer when family members ensure that the door is properly latched. When storm doors need repairs, replacement parts can be found at most hardware stores. If you notice daylight or feel drafts along the edge of outside doors, check the weather stripping and bottom gasket for any tears. Replacement weather stripping is available at hardware stores. If your home has gutters, keep them clear of leaves and other debris. You may be able to use a ladder and clean the gutters yourself, but it may be necessary to hire a professional to do this during the spring and fall. Downspouts and rain leaders should also be checked for trapped leaves and debris that may block the flow of water leaving the gutter. When the bulb in your outside light burns out, replace it by unscrewing the decorative screw on the top, pulling off the fixture cover, and replacing the bulb. For protected light bulbs, such as those in the hallway or bedroom ceiling, use compact fluorescent bulbs to save energy. Your house has an outside faucet for a water hose. When fall comes, you need to disconnect, drain, and roll up your hose. You will also need to drain the faucet. See Section 5 for more information on draining the faucet. There are various mechanical openings in the exterior walls that allow fresh air to enter the house and moist, stale air to leave the house. These openings have screen coverings that should be checked in the late spring and again in the fall for any material that could block the opening. In the winter, check that there is no ice or snow buildup around the gas meter's relief valve vent. This ensures that the gas pressure will be properly maintained into the meter. If the melting snow coming off your roof is causing ice buildup on the gas meter relief vent, remove the ice and contact the gas company. They will install a shield to protect the relief valve. When your house was built, every effort was made to ensure the soil around your house sloped away from the foundation walls. Over time, some of the soil that was disturbed during construction will settle and may allow water to run towards your foundation wall. The greatest amount of soil settling will take place during the first two years after the house was built. If you see water collecting around the edge of your foundation, add soil along the foundation wall to provide adequate drainage away from the foundation. As a homeowner, you are responsible for shoveling snow off your sidewalks. It is for the safety of your family and neighbors to keep the sidewalks clear of snow buildup and ice caused by melting snow. Have at least one snow shovel available by the end of October. It's best to use a mixture of sand and ice melt products to remove packed snow and ice. Remember, as a Habitat homeowner, your house will always be a reflection of Habitat for Humanity. Please be a good neighbor and pay attention to your house's outside appearance. Toro Company has generously donated lawnmowers to assist you with the care of the lawn around the house. Cut the grass, keep your yard picked up, and take care of the plants and trees planted around your house. The grass should be cut about once a week, depending on how fast the grass grows. Cut the grass when it is dry. 
weed lawns and planting areas often to maintain appearance around your house. Contact the master gardener that worked with you on your house if you have questions about lawn care. Water plants if they are dry. Bushes and shrubs should be trimmed in the fall and early spring before the buds form to help control overgrowth. More information about pruning shrubs can be obtained through the University of Minnesota's Extension Service at the website you see here. Clean window wells of leaves and debris. In the spring, check them for debris that the snow may have buried. Rake leaves in the fall and put them in bags. Leaves can be taken to various compost sites around the metropolitan area for disposal. Check with your city or county if you're not sure where to take them. Compost made from the leaves and grass clippings are available for free for home gardens. Do not place bags of leaves in the trash. To extend the life of asphalt driveways, a seal coat should be applied every three years. Seal coat products are available at home improvement stores. Concrete driveways and garage floors will develop cracks over time. These cracks can be caulked with a concrete sealant available in a caulk tube. Section 13, Building Process and Warranty. Like any company that builds homes, Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity holds a state contractor's license and follows the Minnesota Building Codes. The individual representing the company must attend continuing education classes each year covering building codes, construction practices, energy conservation principles, and new materials used in the industry. The house plans for your house were reviewed and the house was built from those plans. Building inspectors inspected your house at different stages of construction to make sure that your house was built correctly. And before you were able to move into your house, Habitat for Humanity had to receive a certificate of occupancy from the city saying that your house was complete and ready to be occupied. Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity follows the warranty standards adopted by the state legislature and warrants your home against defects due to material or installation. If you notice anything defective in your house within the first year, the builder of your house, Habitat for Humanity, will return to fix it. A complete listing of the warranty law can be found in Chapter 327A of the Minnesota Statutes. Your house has three warranties, a one-year, two-year, and a ten-year warranty. These warranty periods start on the day you closed or signed a lease prior to moving into your house. During the one-year period from the warranty start date, the dwelling is warranted to be free from defects caused by faulty workpersonship and defective materials due to non-compliance with building standards. During the two-year period from the warranty start date, the dwelling is warranted to be free from defects caused by faulty installation of plumbing, electrical, heating, and cooling systems due to non-compliance with building standards. And during the 10-year period from the warranty start date, the dwelling is warranted to be free from major construction defects due to non-compliance with building standards. If there is an issue in your home that you believe should be under warranty through Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity, contact Twin Cities Habitat and state that you need to report a warranty issue. If it is under warranty, the warranty service technician will contact you to schedule an inspection of the problem. Issues concerning the furnace, water heater, plumbing, or electrical systems should be directed to the specific subcontractor who installed the system and provides a two-year warranty on their work. Home improvements done on existing structures are also covered under the warranty laws, but only the new work that was completed by Habitat for Humanity is warrantied. It is also important to know that the appliances, such as your refrigerator and stove, and other features, such as your windows and siding, have warranties through the company that built them, not through Twin Cities Habitat. Keep the operator's manuals for the appliances in your home, so that when something breaks, you know the company that made the appliance and are able to determine if your concern is within the warranty period. Complete the registration cards found in the operator's manual of the different appliances and mail them in to the manufacturer. 
If you are uncertain about who to call regarding a warranty concern, feel free to contact the Twin Cities Habitat Office. Section 14, Basic Tools. Even though your home is brand new now, over time every house will have things to fix. Now that you own your home, it is your responsibility to use the tools necessary to keep it working properly. Now you are your own landlord. Here are the recommended tools for maintaining and repairing items in your home. 25 foot tape measure, 16 ounce claw hammer, four in one screwdriver, tongue and groove pliers, utility knife, snow shovel, six foot step ladder, eight inch adjustable wrench, 18 inch general purpose handsaw, pliers set, toolbox, push broom. You may have worked with some of these tools when you were building your home. It is important to own these tools now that you are a homeowner. Section 15, maintenance escrow and hiring subcontractors. As your house gets older, Things in your home will need to be replaced or repaired by a professional. In hiring anyone to do work in your home, it is important that you do your research and be sure that the professional you hire is licensed, experienced, and qualified. We recommend hiring the subcontractors that originally worked on your house. A white label listing the electrical, heating, and plumbing subcontractors and their phone numbers is located on the furnace. Because we know that over time there will be repairs that you will need to make, Habitat has set up a maintenance escrow account for you. Every month as part of your mortgage payment, a small amount of money is put into a special savings account for you called a maintenance escrow. When it is time to repair or replace something in your house, call the accounting department at Habitat to find out how to use money from this account. Section 16. Energy usage in your home. Living in Minnesota, you know that our state has very cold winters and hot summers. Your house has been designed and built with materials and features to help control these temperature changes. The ventilation system, insulation, windows, doors and appliances in your home have been chosen because of their energy efficiency. However, even with the best materials, the choices your family makes will influence how much energy you use. In this chapter, we will share how to use less energy and lower your energy bills. Number one, keep your house as cool as possible in the winter and as warm as possible in the summer. We recommend that keeping your heat at 65 to 68 degrees in the winter. When no one will be in your home for more than three hours, turn your heat down to 60 degrees. Also, turn your heat down overnight. It is recommended to buy a programmable thermostat. In the winter months, open window blinds or curtains to allow sunlight to heat the inside of your home. In the summer months, close curtains during the daytime to reduce heat from the sunlight into your home. In the summer months, Open your windows when the sun sets to allow outside cool air to ventilate your home. If you choose to purchase a window air conditioner, we recommend an Energy Star rated unit. It is best to install window air conditioners in a north or east facing window. Set your window unit at 75 to 80 degrees and turn it up to 83 degrees when no one will be home for more than three hours. Remove window air conditioners in the fall. Number two, plug air leaks around doors and windows. Use caulking or weather stripping around your doors and any penetrations, such as cable lines coming in from the outside. Also, use electrical covers on any outlets on exterior walls. Number three, lower the temperature on your water heater. Set your thermostat to the warm setting at 120 degrees. This will also keep your water from being too hot. Number four, limit opening doors and windows when it is cold outside. Use bathroom fans and your range hood fan to exhaust stale, humid air. Fans are better at removing odors and moisture than windows. Number five, 
unplug appliances, such as toasters, radios, and computer monitors when not in use. To make this easier, plug electronics into a power strip and turn the switch off when they are not in use. Some appliances still use energy when they're plugged in, even if they are turned off. Number six, don't waste energy. Turn off lights, appliances, and electronics when not being used. Don't hold refrigerator and oven doors open any longer than necessary. When possible, use a microwave or toaster oven to heat food instead of the stovetop or oven. Number seven, wash only full loads of laundry and use cold water whenever possible. Always rinse laundry with cold water and consider drying your clothes on a clothesline outside. To maintain the efficiency of your washer and dryer, don't overload them either. Number eight, look for the energy guide and Energy Star labels when purchasing new appliances and electronics. Energy Star appliances and fixtures may cost more up front, but will save you money over time. Number nine, use compact fluorescent bulbs. Fluorescent light bulbs use one fourth of the electricity and last up to 10 times longer than incandescent light bulbs. Number 10. Maintain the large appliances in your house. Change the furnace filter every three months and have the furnace serviced by a professional every two to three years. Clean cobwebs from the water heater and refrigerator vents. Maintaining these appliances helps them run more efficiently, operate more safely, and last longer. Follow the instructions in your owner's manuals. By following these tips, you will reduce the amount of energy you use and save hundreds of dollars per year on utility bills. Section 17, Living in an Association. This chapter is for homeowners who live in a common interest communities or associations. The home you live in is unique because you and your neighbors share a common interest. The common interest you share could be a building, private driveway, play area, or yard. As a homeowner living in an association, you have some special privileges as well as responsibilities. In everything you do, consider the impact it will have on those around you. In an association, it is important to keep all buildings and outside areas looking the same. This keeps the most people happy and keeps the value of your home high. In an association, you pay an association fee. The fee includes management fees, services provided to the homeowners, and building insurance. A large part of your association fee is put into a reserve account. A reserve account is money that is saved so that when a common element, such as your roof or siding in your building needs to be replaced, there will be money saved up to pay for it. Your association fee may cover maintenance of the common areas, such as an irrigation system, street lights, or a private road. Your association may pay a management company to take care of the financial matters of your association. Your association fee may also pay for services, such as a landscaping company and snow removal or garbage removal. Every association provides different services. The governing documents for each association describe what services the association provides. As an owner of a home within an association, it is important to participate. Attend the meetings of your association. Vote for board members you trust or serve as a board member yourself. Communication with your neighbors is important for a positive environment for your family. Remember, you are responsible for maintaining the inside and outside of your home. However, your association documents will provide guidelines to explain how the outside of your house should be maintained and shared. Overall, Living in an association allows you to face the joys and struggles of home ownership with a group of people. It's up to you to make your community one that you are proud to live in. Your Habitat House will probably be one of your biggest investments. As with any investment, taking time to protect it will increase its value. It is our hope that you will enjoy your house and understand how it works. Owning a home is a big responsibility and challenge. However, 
Your family was chosen to purchase a Habitat house because we felt that your family would be successful homeowners. Twin Cities Habitat staff would like to support you in your experience of home ownership. We trust that you will respect Habitat by taking good care of your house.